Hi and welcome to this e-commerce masterclass. My name is Mass and I'm going to be your trainer in this exercise where we are going to create the category detail page. Right now we have already created the category navigation which is populated by using the e-commerce APIs. We observe the multilingual values for the display name of the categories and we have also added in a link so we can actually navigate to a category. But if we do that we will get an error message from Sidecore right now. The request document was not found. This is because we haven't created that document yet. So Sidecore doesn't know how to respond on our request. So the first thing that we need to do in this exercise is to make sure that Sidecore is happy and able to resolve a content item when we request the category page. To do that, we will go into the back office of Sidecore and into the content editor here. Where we can create our category page underneath our store item that we created in the last exercise. Right click on store, insert, insert from template. We will just reuse the same template as we have already created. Which is the masterclass underscore template and we will call the item for category corresponding with the request that we are sending when a customer navigates through the category navigation bar to a category and save now once again we need to make sure that we are binding this content item nicely together with our controller down in our masterclass solution so if we bring that one up here, e-commerce for Sidecore Masterclass Solution, down in the website project, controllers, we will find the controller that are responsible for rendering and presenting the category. Copy the name of that controller and pass it into this field. Remember, to get this field, you need to have standard fields and raw values enable it just like this then I can save it again and hopefully when I now navigate to a category page I will not get that error message from Sidecore but instead I'm getting a blank page here where I still have my category navigation bar from the layout but I have all this empty canvas here where we are going to present all the details that we want to show for the customer around this category that the customer has now navigated to. You can also see when I navigate to a new category here, we do not change the request because we only need one dedicated category page to handle the presentation of the category. But the query string parameter which tells you comments what are the current category are updating corresponding to the category that I'm navigating into. So when we are going to present the current category for our customer, we of course need to have some using statements up here that we can use so we can talk to e-commerce. The first thing that we are going to use is the e-commerce entity v2. This is the namespace where all the entities of e-commerce live so this is also where our category entity are. And then we have the e-commerce extension namespace here. So we can call the display name extension method to observe the multilingual values for our categories when we are presenting those on the detail page here as well. And then we are going to use the e-commerce runtime namespace up here. This namespace will allow us to ask e-commerce what are the current category right now so we don't have to resolve that ourselves. So down here in the index method we have already created a category view model and that is what we are going to return back to our view. So before we can map the values that we want to present around the category into our view model here we need to get the current category. So I will just create a new variable here called current category and then we can go through the e-commerce runtime namespace. 
I know that I don't have to specify the full namespace down here because I have the using statement, but this is just to clarify where things are coming from. All right? You don't have to do it. Newcomers runtime, site context, dot current, dot catalog context, dot current category. Just like that. So with one line, we can get the current category that the customer is looking at right now. The main difference between the WooCommerce runtime namespace and the WooCommerce API namespace that you used in the last exercise is that runtime will only return what are in the context right now, whereas, whereas the API will use the current context to get relevant data and maybe adjust that a little bit so you can say that the API works on top of the runtime namespace. When we are going to present this category for the customer, we want to show the name of it. So the category view model here has a name field that we can get from the current category. But we don't want to use the name property here. We want to use the extension method called display name to make sure that we are observing the multilingual values. Then we also want to have a little description displayed around our category. And we can get that from the current category. And we can get that from the current category dot description, which is also coming from the extension namespace up here. So if I remove this, those two will start complaining. Let's try, <clears throat> let's compile this code, which will also trigger our deploy script that will push our changes to our psycho environment. So hopefully when we refresh this, we will see some details around our categories. Just like this. So now when we navigate to a category, we are displaying the display name of that category on our category page here. Right now we don't have any descriptions in the back office, so there's nothing to display. But if you go in and fill that information in, those will be rendered out here on this page as well. Now it's your time to do this exercise. Please use the handouts exercise 030 browse category detail page as inspiration. There is also some bonus exercises that you can feel free to go in and do so you can enrich the category detail page some more. When we are done implementing this exercise, please continue this video. Welcome back. I hope you managed to implement the browse category detail page so your customer can see some details around your categories when he or she navigates to it. In this exercise, we created a category detail page. So when we browse to a category through our category navigation, we are presenting that category for our customer. We used the WooCommerce runtime namespace to get the current category because WooCommerce only needs one dedicated category page as default to present all the categories on. So we use the WooCommerce runtime to get the current category that the customer is looking at right now. We also use the WooCommerce extension namespace, which allow us to call the description method and also display name method, which is observing the multilingual values. So we can present that nicely for the customer as well corresponding to the culture the customer is coming from. That's it for this exercise. I hope you have enjoyed it. See you in the next one.